What is going on guys, it's Marco here from Marco's Tech Talk and today I'm pretty excited because rather than doing my normal um, type of videos where it's like unboxings, reviews, uh, stuff like that, today we're going to actually be doing more of a how-to. It's going to be how to set up your Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is going to be your wireless one, um, how to set it up headless. So we're basically just going to go from getting it out of the box um, to having a full running headless uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W with um, like remoted into it on VNC via a Windows computer. So I'm going to show you guys some of the things you need to actually get this going and then some of the software we'll need and then I'll just walk you guys through the steps and then ultimately we'll end up um, VNC remoted into the Raspberry Pi um, from Windows. So guys without further ado, let's hop right into the video. Alrighty guys, so this is going to be the stuff you're going to need to use to get this to work out. The power adapter that I used is the one that comes with the Canna kit. I'm just going to show you guys what it says it is, that way you would kind of know what I'm dealing with here. So it's going to be 5.1 volts with a 1 amp output, so um, something like that should be fine. This is the adapter itself that the Raspberry Pi came with. Again, it's the Canna kit one, um, 5.1 volts, 1 amp. So. Um, so that's really all you're going to need. Besides that, you're going to also need, for this particular guy that I'm going to be doing in this situation, um, we're going to need, obviously, a Raspberry Pi Zero, W, um, I believe the WH, I think it's called, the one that comes with the GPIO pins already soldered in. Um, that one will be the same, I'm pretty sure, because it's still wireless. But this one's like the $10 one, the cheap one. And uh, so yeah, we're going to need the Raspberry Pi, obviously. You're going to need an S a micro SD card. I went, the I went with the 32 gigabyte one because it was like $7, no big deal. Um, you're gonna also need the power adapter, like I said. And then I highly recommend you guys get a USB micro SD card reader. Um, yeah, you might be using a laptop or a desktop that has this built in, but getting it to work in a virtual machine seems like a pain that um, I don't wanna deal with. USB devices just kinda of work. Um, so I went ahead and got this at Walmart for like, I don't know, $10 or something. Probably overpaid for it, but I was there and, and that's, you know, I don't know if it was buying it anyway. So, um, Aside from this, we'll go ahead and uh, move on to the computer now, and I'll show you guys what we're going to need to set up as far as uh, Linux goes. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do if you're running Windows or, or even Mac OS, I guess, too, um, is go ahead and just go to uh, www.virtualbox.org, and we're just going to download VirtualBox 6.0. Um, it's the newest one, and uh, in here you'd pick your, uh, your host. This is assuming you don't have Linux already. You don't have to do it this way. You could do it through Windows, but it requires like third-party stuff to be able to read the Linux file system, to add the files you need to run a headless, and it just ends up being too complicated in my opinion, and it's like lasting, you know, because you're, you're installing the stuff on your Windows OS that you might not ever need to use again, so I just prefer to do it in a virtual machine. So in this case, we go to Windows Hosts, and then it'll just download it for me, but I already have it, so I'm just going to go ahead and actually cancel that. Um, and then it'll be pretty self-explanatory at this point. You'll just uh, click on New, um, and then you'd, you'd create your your stuff here that you'd want to set up and it's really it's pretty it's pretty easy guides you through it it's really not all that complicated so aside from that we'll go ahead and uh, take a look once you have this all set up you uh, and you just um, also have to pick your your Linux distro as well I use Ubuntu just because it's really popular and and like there's write-ups for it and it's just easy to deal with as far as Linux is concerned that's what I recommend um, so this is it here the first thing you want to do once you get this running, once you get all your drivers set up and, and whatever you need to do to get this to work right, we'll just go ahead and pop this in the full screen at this point since uh, so we're going to be pretty much using this from here on out. So you're going to want to go uh, to raspberrypi.org, that's the official Raspberry Pi website, and then we're going to click on downloads, and then this is where you would see um, Raspbian and all that. You can do noobs, I don't really know what that does, but I, have, I haven't needed to use it for this so I wouldn't be too worried about it. I just click on Raspbian, and here is where you get to choose your your um, OS that you want. So Raspbian Buster Lite is Raspbian, it's just a light version. It does not have a GUI, it's all done through command line, um, or through terminal I should say, and it's pretty small. Uh, Raspbian Buster with desktop, that's what we're going to be using here today. This has a GUI, and um, or a GUI I guess I could say. Um, and then this is the one with the recommended software that's not necessary. I mean you could do it if you want I guess, I don't see why not. but. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and do this for the sake of this demonstration here. Um, and uh, basically setting these two up at least, uh, the desktop one and the light one, are the same as far as getting to the SSH prompt. The only thing different we're going to do with this one is go one step further and enable VNC so we can actually um, connect to it 
on on Windows or even through here. I guess we could we could do it on Linux too. I believe I just only done it on Windows, so I'm not 100 percent sure. All right, so it's going to be a zip file once it's done. Um, we're going to go ahead and just click on that, and uh, we're going to want to extract it since again it's a zip file. I think that uh, the program we're going to use to extract this can extract, but I just I was just like doing it first, so I'm just going to pick documents for pretty generic extract, and uh, let it do that for a second. All right, and now it's all extracted. That's great. We're going to go ahead and close this, and uh, we'll close this tab here. The next thing you're going to want to get is Etcher. A lot of people recommend this. It works really well. Um, this is the website here, and then we're just going to download for Linux 64-bit because that's what I'm running here, and uh, we'll go ahead and save that as well. That's pretty fast, and uh, we'll just go ahead and launch that. Same situation. We're going to extract this, so we'll do that. All right, now that that's extracted, we're going to go ahead and launch it. it. Does take a second to launch? At least it did on another virtual machine I tried on a different computer. This one's a little faster, but I don't know. We'll just close this out too. Cool. So now um, we're going to select our image. So in this case, it's going to be we're going to go to documents like like I had left it before, and then pick our image and open it. And now it's going to want our target. So for our target, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB card reader. And um, wait for that to connect on Windows. Actually, Windows probably won't probably won't like it because it's in a Linux format right now. But uh, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Go ahead and switch it over. We'll click on devices. Um, we'll go to USB, and then we'll go ahead and select the one we need, which is probably this one. That of course is uh, obviously not where we need it to be. Um, give me one second here. Let me uh, minimize this and see what we need to do. All right, so Windows doesn't seem too happy about this drive. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to format it real fast. We're going to go to this PC and then Manage. This is, again, on, on the host machine, Windows 10. Go to Disk Management. Let it do this for a second here. Um, and then I have several drives, so I mean for me, it's you know, a little more risky to pick the wrong one on accident. But um, in this case, it's going to be this removable. I know it's 32 gigabyte. It's removable, um, and I know that it's you know boot and that G is unrecognizable. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just delete these volumes on it. And then uh, once that's done, we'll go ahead and format it. Takes it a little bit to do that. And then great, now it's uh, unallocated here, unallocated. So we'll go ahead and uh, hit new simple volume. Yeah, sure, all that's great. We'll leave it at new volume, doesn't matter. And then finish that up. Takes a couple seconds. Great, we're done. Now we have new volume. Awesome. So we'll close that out, close this out, hop back into Linux, and uh, select our target. Actually, wait, it won't be ready yet. We have to select it here. Go to Devices again, USB, and then uh, Generic Mass Storage Device. That looks about right. So we'll click that and we'll double check it to make sure that's correct. Uh, yeah, new volume, new volume. Perfect. That's um, well, takes it a second. Okay, yeah. So that's that's what we want to use. We want to use new volume. So in this case, you would choose the correct one and then hit flash. Um, type in your password, and then you just wait. It's really all it is. So we'll give that some time. All right. So now that's all done. We want to go ahead and launch our file manager. Go to the boot partition of our drive, um, and this is where stuff's going to get a little interesting. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to make this a little bigger. All right. So now you're going to have to create a text file. Um, that has the wireless information in it. Creating a text file in Linux isn't as easy as right clicking on the desktop and going to like new and all that stuff. Um, at least I haven't found it yet. So I just use text editor, you click on that, and then um, you'll have that launched. But I already went ahead and created the document that I needed to have um, right here. So I called it Raspberry Pi.txt just because that was easy to like keep track of it. But um, but it can't be called that to actually work the way it needs to work. But before we get to that, I'll just show you guys what it needs to say. So um, the country has to have your country code in it, and then basically all the stuff verbatim. Um, I'll go ahead and just copy and paste this in the description so it's easier for you guys. And um, very important here, make sure you put your network name, obviously, um, which isn't going to be network name, I'm sure. Um, and then your network password goes here. And uh, they have to be in quotes, so you have to leave the quotes there. So, um, so if I was going to change this to be like a legit one, let's say, let's say my router name was uh, um, MTT Network or something, it would be like this, and um, that would be my SSID, and then my password, for example, 
um, let's just say the password is going to be password1 would be that and now WPA PSK um, is the key management this I believe is WPA2 um, it worked for me personally which is WPA2 so I'm assuming that's what that is as far as other ones go I'm not really sure what they would have to be but like 99% of people these days I believe do use this so this should cover most of you guys um, and then that's really it. you want to make sure this brackets here this brackets here and this this would work though now at this point as far as um, you know getting this connected if this was legitimate so we're gonna go ahead and actually just save that and then um, I'm just gonna drag this into here made a copy of it but it, like I said it can't be called this so we're gonna rename it right click it rename it's got to be called WPA underscore supplicant and then it's got to be dot conf it's got to be a configuration file so now it's ready to go um, and the last thing we need to do is create one more file in this case I'm gonna actually do text editor um, it's gonna just be blank literally like that's it just that save and then um, we're gonna just leave it here at the desktop and then we're gonna call it SSH whoops that's not seeming to work out too well there for me there SSH and we'll leave it as dot text just for the sake of saving it now it's saved we'll drag that over here and we're gonna right click rename and remove the dot text that has to be gone the file just has to be SSH just like this and that's that we're finished so now it's time to actually go ahead and boot the Raspberry Pi up and see what we can come up with so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now alright guys so in order to actually SSH into your Raspberry Pi um, you're gonna need at least on Windows this program here called putty um, just go ahead and click download it here and then uh, from here you're gonna go ahead and pick the one you need in my case I'm gonna use 64-bit and uh, download that and then we'll go through the install process and uh, it'll be ready to go all right so now that you have putty installed you need to get the real VNC viewer you can go ahead and follow this link right here and uh, pick your type in my case exe x64 download that and then you'll have that ready to go once you install that all right so now that we have VNC viewer and putty installed we're gonna go ahead and actually connect to the Raspberry Pi um, you can go ahead and type in the host name or um, if you want you can use the IP address of your Raspberry Pi as well which you can find typically in your routers connected devices section I'll show you guys a picture of what mine looked like um, and you can use that IP address there or the host name it's supposed to work both ways um, this should work in theory uh, and it looks like it is we're just gonna hit yes on this so the username is always gonna be Pi on a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian on it out of the box and the password is gonna be Raspberry and um, that's it now we are connected to the Raspberry Pi via SSH so if all you wanted to do was do the light version of Raspbian Buster you're good to go you're done you're finished everything's good but we're gonna go ahead and take it one step further like I said earlier and we're gonna actually get to the GUI of it we're gonna remote into that but in order to do that we have to actually enable it first so we're gonna type in Raspi config or actually whoops I forgot you have to do sudo first or sudo however you say it now we're in here so we're gonna go to the interfacing options and then go to VNC and then we're gonna enable it and it is now enabled while well, it's working on it but once that's done it's gonna be enabled and that's that and now we're just gonna go ahead and hit finish and it's done alright so once you've gone ahead and enabled that we still need to do one more thing and that is to um, enable booting to desktop mode so we're gonna go back to the Raspberry Pi config go to boot options and then for B1 we're gonna hit this and say we want to des or launch the desktop and then it's gonna apply that once that's done we're gonna go ahead and hit finish and then we're gonna reboot it because uh, you know it kind of needs to do that we're gonna obviously disconnect at this point because it's no longer on the network so whenever we get disconnected I typically like to set up a constant ping on something when I'm trying to figure out what's going on with it uh, in this case we're just gonna do 192.168.0.37 and uh, we'll just see when it comes back up on the network and then we know it's time to start uh, trying to connect to it again once that happens and just like that the Raspberry Pi is back on the network so we'll go ahead and uh, cancel that and we will try to connect to it again with putty so let's launch that real quick alright so now there's still one more thing we have to do and that is enabling or rather setting the resolution so it actually can display it in VNC um, so we're gonna just log back into the Pi once more and once that's done we're gonna type in raspi config again oops I always forget to do sudo on here I don't know why alright great we're gonna to go to advanced options um, resolution and in my case I'm just gonna set 
the max, which is 1920 by 1080. And it's set. And we're going to go to finish and reboot it one more time. Once again, it's going to disconnect. And we're going to set up a constant ping on it. At least I am just to verify that, uh, you know, when it comes on, it's good to go. So we'll give that a couple seconds. All right, so once again, we're getting a reply from it now. So that's great. So one more time, we'll go ahead and just try to connect to it, make sure it's good here. It should be, there should be no reason why it's not, quite honestly, at this point. I think I might have had the password in wrong there. Oh, I got it right. Okay, sweet. So we're good to go. We're back in the Pi. Let's go ahead and try to connect to it here. We could type in Raspberry once more. Raspberry Pi, I mean. Enter. And we should get a desktop at this point once we um, get past the login one more time. And that's it. We're here, guys. So we'll go ahead and type in Raspberry again. Log in. And at this point, we have successfully set up our Raspberry Pi um, W to be running in a headless mode via VNC. Again, we have not bothered to connect any cables to this thing at all at this point other than the power cable. And here we are. It is incredibly slow. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero after all. It is $10 if you get this configuration, so don't expect it to be incredible. Um, this thing is really just meant for like little projects and stuff like that. And it's going to take you through getting started with it. And um, that's really about it, guys. So I appreciate you watching the video. If you guys did like the video, go ahead and give me a like. Um, if you didn't, go ahead and dislike the video for me. Leave some comments if you have any questions. Um, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching.